Chef Eric Lee is mixing up his fire roasted pizza toppings in a big way. You're not gonna find ham and pineapple at this place. It's called Pizzeria Gusto and you're gonna love it. Italian version of bacon? Yeah, we're, we're 
The traditional bacon is, you know, uh, brined and then uh, smoked. This is just cured. Okay. Cured pork belly. So uh, we get we get going in the pan, let it render, get a little translucent. Uh, then I'll add our Brussels sprouts. Then our fantastic chili mix. Love the chili mix. Yeah. So you know you go to restaurants and there's like you know the shaker of old chilies that you know are generic. Pizzeria Gusto makes their own chili mix and it's unbelievable. So I spread around the pan. Just make sure I get a good enough amount in there. Put it back on and I crank the heat. So I start caramelizing and then browning up the Brussels sprouts. So you see we start browning a little bit? Yeah. We don't need to get too much more brown. So they really don't take that long to cook. They don't. It's actually amazing. So this is a smaller uh, batch that we've had. We cut them in half. It'll honestly take three minutes. Okay, so now what is this golden liquid juice that we're so adding So you mentioned, here? you asked us if this was stock. Yeah, because it is, looks like chicken stock. This is Italian stock called Brodo. Brodo. So usually they would make um, stock out of cured meat and regular stock and then Parmesan rinds. So they have different, three different Brodos to go from. Okay. So we just make ours out of uh, Parmesan rinds, cured meats, vegetables, anything we have going, we put it into our stock. Yeah, because I mean, traditional stock, I would just, you know, render down some chicken juice or beef stock, but this, so this is the Italian version. Yeah. Brodo. Yeah. Do you call it bro for short? Or a lot of, a lot of, like, Brodo baggins. Brodo. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Well, and then, covered. Okay, so how long will that? That'll be... Depending on the amount of liquid I put in, yep. um, it should be like three minutes, and then I'll season it in probably about a minute. Okay, uh, well, I just really want to eat it, so. Yeah, so do I. This is actually great breakfast. Well, I think so. This one's a fried egg. It's a wonderful breakfast. Okay, I'm just going to season it. Okay, so a little sea salt? No, I'll use kosher salt. For oh, this. okay. Sea salt is a great finishing salt. The chunkier. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Cracked pepper. So this is the amazing chili mix that they make here. So what are the chilies in it? Um, there are your regular run of the mill um, red chilies. Yeah. There's a fire roasted jalapeno chili. There's a guajillo chili. There's a habanero chili. And there might be one more. Well, either way, it's beautiful. It and it's colorful. It's colorful. And, and it and tastes we, so much better than the original, like the one that everyone used. You do? Yeah. Oh. So you can come in and you can buy a mix. Awesome. Good to know. But there she is. So, for garnishing, okay. we do a little bit of uh, chili oil. Okay. Which we basically just take those chilies and steep it in canola oil for this. It smells amazing. Oh, yeah. So we drizzle a little bit of chili oil. Uh, and now we add our breadcrumbs. Ooh. So our breadcrumbs, uh, because we do bruschettas. Right. So basically it's, you know, toasted baguette with olive oil and sea salt. Right. So it's already like the best breadcrumb. And in fact, I'm going to put on quite a bit because I like it. So what, like, okay, if I was making a Brussels sprout dish, I would never think to add breadcrumbs. How, like... Uh, you know, it's a texture thing. Yeah. You know, it turns out it's sort of like, you know, casserole crunchy. The roast sprouts themselves are still a little dead days so they have still a little bit of bite to them. Right. So. Okay, so it's done. It's done. So now we get to eat it. Which That's is, again, my favorite part. You have to have some too. Oh, okay. We'll do, yeah, a, yeah. We'll do a little spoon cheers. But if I must. Okay. I love the bacon, love the breadcrumbs. <clears throat> I'm loving this on it. Yeah, another, another little zip. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of a secret little hidden ingredient that I didn't know was in it. Yeah. Well, people always want, like, even when they buy our chilies, they're like, how can I make these at home? Well, I can tell you how to make them at home. But, but it won't be the it same. It won't be the same. Let's be honest, so, it won't be the same. Yeah. Mm. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? 
MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Shep. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind-the-scenes footage, and exclusive news. Creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204 599 3357. Do you own or manage a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. Okay, so Eric, here we are in the pizza zone, my favorite place in this restaurant. Well, we were saying this is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. So we have our dough. And you do have experience stretching some pizza dough before. Well, you know what? Why don't you explain to us exactly how to do it? We got um, the, I know we got the pivot and the, what is this one called? The shuffle? Uh, I call it the pinch. The, the pinch. pinch, the pivot, and the, uh, the, the pinch, the pivot, and the stretch. Okay, so what, so for those trying to make this at home, what do you start with? Uh, well, first of all, I pulled out the, the dough about 15 minutes ago. Okay. Uh, let it come to room temperature just to make it a little more pliable. Yeah. Um, and then, so I pinch the edges. Okay, so, we're, so we start with the pinch. Yeah. And then you can feel when you go all the way around. Yeah. All right. Now I've got my pivot. Okay, so I'm left handed, so I'm going to. I'm right handed. My pivot. It's okay, I want to hold it against and you. And then I've got my knife hand. <laughs> so okay. I'm kind of stretching and turning. Stretch and turn. Yeah. And then that's why I'm stretching the outsides and the middle instead of just, if I just push this way, then you're I'm just, just stretching the out the middle yeah. and then it could possibly get too thin and break. No one wants a broken pizza dough. No. no. And then I can't serve it to you either. Are you spinning? Now what, this is a new one. What are you doing here? What was that? It's like a turntable. Okay. Right? What are you, a DJ? No, I'm a pizza maker. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how's that for size? Uh, it's perfect size. Okay. So I just make sure that it's still on some semolina because it'll be easier for us to shovel it up and get into the oven. So. And then I look I also look for little holes. And I try to doctor up any of the little holes. Oh, I see a little hole right there. So Seven. we are going to make the 887. Which is? My favorite pizza. Your favorite pizza, indeed. So. This is our, we use about two ounces of tomato sauce. Got it. Per. And then just we spread it, start off small circles in the middle, get the larger circles, right? So now do you guys use whole tomatoes, crushed tomatoes? Uh, we, use, uh, we use a tomato, uh, San Marzano crushed tomatoes from, okay. uh, from DeLuca's, um, where we separate the pulp from the juice, and then we cook the juice down for the tomato sauce. 
Got it. Then we use the pulp for like the margarita pizza and then the platanas. I want the pretty lines like yours. I oh, know that's really pretty. That's really good for How's that? That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. I pass. So then we use our calabrese. Do you make that in-house? No, we don't. Uh, we, for our antipasto plates, we'll, we'll cure meats in-house, in, in but we can't keep up. Are you eating? The... I'm just having a taste test. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. still checking. Uh, it's great, <laughs> just so you know. Um, we can't keep up. Mm. We do, I think we do close to 40,000 pizzas a year. 40,000? Yeah. So you can put it on as many as you want, but I will do what I uh, train my kids to do. Okay. Uh, I put on six. Okay. I'm putting on about nine. That is ish. Whatever you wish. There we go. Okay, so we have our. We're putting our peppers on. Mm -hmm. Splitting them in half. You're a little bit ahead of me. Because I do this. Do you make forty thousand. Forty thousand pieces a year. Okay, so there we go. And then our cacciatore sausage, which I love. I give you extra just so I know. I, I can, put more yeah, on. and have, have a little taste test. Of course. I love this sausage because it's hard. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like. Well, yeah, it's, it's got a little more texture, right? It's a uh, good mouth feel. I mean, a lot of the ingredients, pizza, you think it's gonna be like really soft, so it's nice to have a little textural difference. There we go. And then our cheese. And that's it? Yeah, this is it. Italian food was great at making, you know, three, four, or five ingredients. This tastes phenomenal, right? And this does taste phenomenal, hence why it's one of my favorite pizzas. Did I put enough on? Uh, you can put on a little bit more if you want. Don't want to be stingy on the cheese. Okay. Okay, and so they look great. Uh, you know, we can push things to the edge a little bit more, but I like to, have, I like to see a little bit of crust. Uh, and then I just grab our, our shovel. Now, is there a real technical term for that, or you just call it a shovel? Uh, <laughs> I think it's called a peel. Okay. So, but I like to call this the shovel, and then ones that we turn the pizzas, right. I like to call those the peel. So now, what is what temperature is the oven at? Um, right now, it's probably about 650. So Pretty we, hot. So we do the hand test. So when it's like at the right temperature, yeah. you cannot keep your hand in there for 10 seconds. So how long can you keep your hand in? Uh, that was probably about 12 seconds. So, um, and I'll put the, uh, the pizzas in right now. Okay, I'm perfect. Close to the oven and they should be done within three minutes. So. Okay, so we just pulled the 887s out of the oven. Now we get to add a little bit of cheese. Indeed, yeah. So uh, as much cheese as you wish. Okay. Um, do you I, have any I, I, any tricks? No, I it's just pull off. I try not to. I try to do about half a ball per pizza. Okay. Six now, bucks. what type of cheese is this? Uh, this is the Pure Delatte. So this yeah. is like a fresh mozzarella milk. Maybe a tiny bit more in mine. Uh, for sure. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yours is nicer because you have the big chunks. Yeah, it's rustic. Fine, your pizza's prettier. And then we give you our wonderful uh, knife forks. Knife forks? Yeah, knife forks with a little What am I supposed to do up. with this? Cut oh, it? Yeah. Okay, let's, oh, I'm gonna watch. Yeah, just gotta get your thumb on there and get Really down. Get, get down and give her. And you, sometimes people start with the opposite sides and pull away. Ooh, these must be new, they're quite sharp. I was gonna say, this is pretty sharp. There are some dull ones out there. Well, not in our kitchen. Okay, so are you one of those pizza guys that eats your pizza with a fork and knife, or do you actually eat it like a real pizza? Mm -hmm. um, I eat like a real pizza, and I, I, cut, I like cut my pizza into four, and then I fold, and then I eat it sandwich style. Because I, I'm not a knife and fork pizza girl. Oh, no, no. I'm a, let me pick up my piece, and let me eat it with my hand. Yep. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it's gonna be really hot. It is, it'll be really hot. <laughs> Mm. And this is why I love Pizza Gusto and I love the 887. It is a really good pizza. It's a great pizza. Yeah. I mean, you have the saltiness from the two different types of meats. You have two different types of cheeses. You got a little, you know, some roasted red pepper in there. Some sweet pepper. What more do you want, really?
couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind-the-scenes footage, and exclusive news. Stone Creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204-599-3357. Do you own or manage a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. You ordered a lot of the bruschetta, I love the bruschetta here. You've got some specialties. Um, the anti pasta is phenomenal. I never skip dessert, if you can't tell. <laughs> and, and I believe we're doing your favorite dessert right now. We are. So tell me about this dessert. So this is our chocolate badino tart. So badino is basically a cooked pudding. A cooked pudding? Yeah. So what? And it is... I eat my favorite thing is a pudding? Yeah. No. Yeah. I thought it was a cake. No. Oh. Yeah. Jeez. I'm sorry. You just ruined my day. Just oh, kidding. But it's, it's, it still tastes wonderful. It's delicious. Well, okay. thank you. Um, so it's obviously it's chocolate on chocolate, so you know, get you twice there. Yeah. Um, but then what, what, what really wows everybody is the garnish. And it's really, really simple, and it's just something that really pairs greatly with chocolate, which is, you know, olive oil and sea salt. Okay, so Eric, you just warmed that spoon up. For what reason? Uh, <laughs> I, well, I hate spoon up because it, uh, it makes it easier just to make a quenelle out of, out of the whipping cream. A what now? Like a, a quenelle. Okay. Which is what the and shape of the whipped cream is on the plate. Okay. That's called a quenelle. Quenelle. Um, okay. We got a quenelle here. Yeah. And uh, it makes like a hot knife through butter. Got it. Yeah. So really smooths it out. Makes it all nice. Hot spoon through whipped cream. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And it looks beautiful. The quenelle. Jeez. Look cup. at that. And then your favorite stuff. The olive oil. So it's funny because when I explain this dessert to some of my friends, because it is one of my favorites, I say, you know, there's sea salt on it, there's olive oil, and everyone kind of gets a bit, I don't want to say grossed out, but it's something new to them. But I think everyone needs to try it, and they need to see it to believe it. Well, a lot of, a lot of I think even a lot of chocolate bars right now are doing olive oil and sea salt chocolate bars. I've never had one yet. Oh, I, you know. We need I, to find me one. I don't know if I can say name brands. Well, there are uh, you'll, you'll at get a me, certain get me store one? that you can get that are okay. all well piece of Okay, well, I need to check it out. Yeah, you do. Okay, Eric, I'm ready. I have my spoon. This is what I've been waiting for. Maybe you want some chocolate? Yeah. Well, now that I know it's pudding, geez, I can have a whole 
lot more, I feel like. Oh, yeah. I have to say, the olive oil and the salt make it. They really do. Yeah. They really do. And as I said before, some of my friends, when I explain this dish and I say there's olive oil and salt on it, they're like, on dessert, on chocolate, it's true. Olive oil and salt on chocolate makes everyone happy. Mmm. So good. Good job. Thank you. If you are looking for delicious homemade Italian food with a twist, come and see Chef Eric Lee at Pizzeria Gusto. You're gonna love it. And you're also gonna love this delicious chocolate tart with olive oil and sea salt all over the top. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes footage, and exclusive news. creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204-599-3357. Do you own or manage a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes footage, and exclusive news.